Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, to record a case for the IDKD refresher series. Today, I will be talking about uh, diseases of the breast and in particular, the application of problem-solving MRI. Our case here is a woman who is at a greater than average risk of breast cancer. In her case, that is greater than 15%. She already um, had once uh, a bout of breast cancer in her life, so she is status post left mastectomy in August 2017. So she's coming for regular follow-up after surgery um, without any clinical complaints um, at this date. So she underwent a right screening mammogram, and as we can see here, she can be classified as, as heterogeneously dense, so which limits the sensitivity of mammography in this case. Um, as she status post left mastectomy, we only have a right mammogram, so it actually uh, one already in addition to her being heterogeneously dense, which potentially can mask subtle lesions. It's already, we are also lacking the inherent control group we usually have with respect to symmetry. So this is her right mammogram. This was actually read as normal. I personally agree with this. Um, assessment we see a few benign calcified cysts yeah but there are no evident asymmetries masses suspicious calcifications so this was read as normal as she is being at a greater than average risk of breast cancer um and in a, on top of that heterogeneously dense she uh, also underwent a screening sonogram um, she's usually also undergoing because she's at increased uh, risk. Uh, she has, a, has an increased uh, risk of breast cancer greater than average. She's also undergoing screening MRIs, but um, there is usually the option to have them either at the same time, then the patient usually undergoes a mammogram plus MRI, or there's, this is the other option, which is up to the um, clinician she is in the care of, um, either mammo sono at one point and then half a year uh, later she has mri so alternating mammo and mri and she's one she was one of those people who is on the alternating path so she underwent concurrently with mammogram she underwent sonogram so what we were seeing on sonography was immediately retro areolar she had um which this hypoechoic tubular structures or lesions so to speak however um this in relation to the nipple here we can see again we this is partially uh uh in closer to the nipple there are more anechoic areas which uh, were felt to be basically ducked with secretions in it and then uh, that also led us to the thought that this other hypoechoic material um, which also had a tubular shape um, could be impacted debris in a duct rather than actually being a, so a solid component. We actually, to confirm our suspicion, we also um, did color Doppler and there was no vascularity detected within those hypoechoic masses. So um, the question is what are we going to do now? So um, there are, in that case, would be there would be several options. Of course, you can say I cannot rule out that these are hypo that these hypoechoic masses are not just impacted debris in a duct, but is a solid tumor and refer her to biopsy. So say this is suspicious. However, this patient's actually a had a strong objection to biopsy and was 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 actually inquiring whether there are other options to to rule to basically obviate an unnecessary breast biopsy also um during examination which was um doctor as a physician performed um they, we felt that this is most likely debris in the duct the other option would be of course a short-term follow-up however the patient demanded a more immediate um solution to this question and of course we said well what we're gonna do is we are gonna um do her mri concurrently this time basically if there is no enhancement and actually if this really is debris in the duct we will be very um will be able to confidently tell that after mri so a uh, negative mri would actually rule out that there is uh, a uh, 
a suspicious growing mass and she could then be classified as virus flu. So we, she proceeded to her, in this case, problem solving MRI. So MRI, problem solving MRI is usually per definition when, when the findings, when you cannot tell with conventional imaging, you cannot answer the question. And in this case, we could not definitely answer the question with conventional imaging. The actual option would have been to do a biopsy with the, which was the patient was strongly um, against. So we then proceeded to her problem-solving MRI. And this is an, a FET-suppressed contrast-enhanced uh, sequence, um, so first after contrast. And what we're going to see here, and I want to highlight that this is post-contrast FET-suppressed, but these are not subtraction imaging. So this is post-contrast FET-suppressed, but not subtracted. And what we see here in very good correlation, actually, with her uh, finding on ultrasound, we see here hyper intense ducts with like a more prominent um, dilated area, which is most likely corresponding to the sonographic area. We're seeing immediately retroareola that matches up very well. So is this actually an enhancement? Well, from this image, we cannot tell. There are two options. What we can do now, we can go to the unenhanced um, pre-contrast T1 weighted fat saturated images or we make our life actually even easier we have a look at the subtract imaging which would be this here this is exactly the same scan but this one we have subtraction images we very nicely see that there's contrast in the image because we have the heart enhancing. So if you always want to make sure whether you have actually contrast in the patient, have a look at the heart. The heart should enhance. If there is no contrast in the heart, the so-called dark heart sign, that most likely means that the contrast was not going into the patient. Here we see what we also saw before, a very nice intramural lymph node in the upper outer quadrant. And then what we can, what else can we see? Well, that is actually, I think, the, the solution to our problem. We don't see any suspicious enhancement. All those areas which were bright um, on the fat-saturated contrast-enhanced scan were actually corresponding to proteinaceous um, content in the duct. Proteinaceous content um, will be also on the on T1-weighted, will be hyper-intense, but when there are no solid components, will not enhance. So in particular, that area with the dilated duct retroareola, there we can see here the nipple, no enhancement at all. Which is very reassuring for the patient. And here I have all the sequences listed out. So this is the way I usually look at it. So we have the T2-weighted image. We have the um, contrast um, enhanced with um, um, fat saturated and the subtraction and T2-weighted um, non-fat set. And what we can see here is we have here proteinaceous content which, uh, where we see probably some blood products in there. That's why it's hypo-intense on T2-weighted image, proteinaceous content. But when we give contrast and do subtraction imaging, we see there's no suspicious enhancement at all ruling out that there is an underlying enhancing mass to the to the hypoechoic nodules we saw on sonographic imaging. So when you would have to assign a virus category now, well, did MRI in this case solve our pro um, problem? Yes, in this case, it definitely did. We can now classify this patient as a virus too. This was proteinaceous ductal contrast and debris, which fits very much. And I think this is actually, you always have to put all the imaging modalities factors together. So we had hypoechoic masses, um, which were very suspicious originally of being just ductal content and debris. Um, without any vascularity, we have in good correlation a proteinaceous dilated duct on contrast enhanced MRI without any suspicious enhancement. So I think we can confidently classify this um, MRI as virus 2 benign. Um, so MRI for problem solving 
if with the right indication, it can really be very contributory. You have to be aware that if a finding is suspicious for malignancy, then an MRI is not a problem-solving MRI. This will rather be then there to confirm your suspicion, and the question is if you really need it. Uh, a per definition, an accurate problem-solving MRI is when the finding is equivocal and you cannot solve or half the answer with conventional imaging, then it is a problem-solving MRI, which it was in that case, and then very often it can provide you with the answer. If you want to do some further reading on that case, here are several papers I can highly recommend with respect to that. They all agree that if a finding you is originally suspicious for malignancy, unconventional imaging, you will not may come around a biopsy, but if it is really equivocal, inconclusive, then you can proceed with a problem-solving MRI. And with this, I want to conclude. Thank you very much for your attention, and please stay tuned for more cases with IDKD. Thank you very much for your attention.